All right, so today we're talking about tow vehicles. So that is vehicles that we're gonna pull behind the bus. So originally we have a vehicle that we really like and it's our Toyota Sienna, but um, it cannot be flat towed easily. Um, there's a bunch of modifications that need to be made to the transmission and things like that that was just gonna be way more trouble to be able to tow. Plus, we kind of wanted um, a slightly more off-road vehicle, maybe something with a little bit higher clearance um, for when we're boondocking and out kind of in, you know, a non-dispersed camping area that we would have a vehicle that is capable of going, you know, where our minivan would probably struggle to go. And so, that the fact that there's six of us um, narrowed our choices down significantly. So there's a thing called the dinghy guide. So I guess they call them dinghies when you pull them behind a motorhome or an RV or something. So the cars that you pull behind them are called dinghies. So there's a thing called the dinghy guide and it tells you which vehicles can be pulled or not pulled behind uh, RVs. And the fact that there's six of us really limited our options down to basically Suburbans, Tahoes, which are basically the same thing, and um, Dodge Durangos. So there was a couple other ones, um, but those are the ones that we had considered. So we looked for a while for a, a Tahoe, and the problem with those is they have two flavors of four-wheel drive, one with a two-speed transfer case and one without, and everyone that we saw for sale was the single-speed transfer case, which cannot be flat-towed. Fortunately, we did find a Dodge Durango with the all-wheel drive and the V8. That was the requirement. So with the Durango, it had to be all-wheel drive and it had to be the V8 in order to be flat-towed. So we did find one of those, and so we now have that. And so now comes the process of, okay, what do we need to get this thing ready to tow behind the motorhome or the RV? Um, so the first thing we need is a base plate. So this here is a base plate, and... Um, it basically hooks up to the frame of the car and gives you an anchor point to be able to put your 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 um, arms that you're gonna get you're gonna tow with so the tow bar so the other thing is the tow bar so this is the tow bar here um, so the one we decided on is called the ready brute elite tow bar um, and there was several factors that came into that decision um, there's also ones by um, Roadmaster as well as Blue Ox are the two big, big names. Um, we chose this NSA one um, mostly because of their reputation. Um, online, they have a great reputation. Everyone that we came across seemed to love their Ready Brute tow bar. So um, that and this has a lifetime warranty, whereas those other two only have a one year warranty. So um, we thought. If someone will stand behind their product, we're gonna we're gonna try that, and especially since people tend to be happy with it. The other thing that's really cool about this um, tow bar is that it comes with an integrated brake. So on tow vehicles in most states, you have to have a brake that when you apply the brakes in the RV, then brakes are applied in the vehicle as well. And there are a number of ways that people accomplish that. There's air systems. There's pulley systems, there's, I mean, there's probably five different ones that we looked at, and this is the one we decided on, and mostly because it's the simplest one. So this one hooks up to um, to the hitch, and there's, there's a little thing inside where a lever um, mechanically pulls on the brakes from the inside. So I was skeptical at first, but every review I came across was really positive and said that the simplicity of this system it's always worked they've had it on there for five years they've had it on there for three years they've had it on there for ten years everyone seemed to really like this setup so we said okay we'll give it a go so the last piece of the puzzle is wiring it all and that is so that when the brake lights come on in the RV, then the brake lights come on in the back of the vehicle to inform, you know, what you're doing or if you're turning and things like that. There is one kind of major complication. So what they suggest for doing that are these, um, they're these diodes. So the diodes then only allow the electricity to flow one way. 
So we did, however, find um, there's just one thing wrong with that, and that is when you apply the brake, the lights all come on regardless of what's going on with the RV. So the brake lights will override turn signals and things like that. And we'll go into a little bit more detail on that. But I ended up not purchasing a kit for that, but designing kind of my own um, system because I, I didn't want to do what they were doing. So anyway, we'll walk through that. It's very similar, but it's, it's different in a few key ways. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and, so step one is going to be to install this plate. And so that requires dismantling the entire front of the car. Um, and so we've got the car up and off the ground and stuff. And so um, we're gonna dismantle the front and install this plate, that's the first thing. And then we'll be installing the cables for the brakes and then probably putting everything back together. And then the last step will be to do the wiring. So that's the plan for today, we'll see how it goes. This is just a matter of like unpinning it. Yeah, I'm just taking out the electrical connection because the fog light sees that. I don't know what I'm doing. You want an extra set of hands? Oh, geez. Okay. Do you want to put that? that I'm not gonna go all the way tight. Hey Dom, can you trade dad places? Does this even need to be held up or is it? Yes, you still need to kind of hold it in no, place. No, this isn't going to work. It's not? It doesn't fit. We're going to end it. Yeah, I'll hold it up. You just put the Loctite in. Okay. Put the screw in. Right. How much Loctite do I put on? Enough. to hold it. Oh, jeez. Like that? And it just like twists on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, well, that took us all day yesterday just to get this bar mounted. So we had a few issues. Um, one is the bar didn't line up perfectly correctly, and so we had to drill one of the holes to be bigger, and that was kind of a big hassle. But the bigger problem was they sent the wrong bolts. So they were the right size but the wrong pitch. So they fit for like three or four threads, and then they were just hard to drive up. And so we were like, well, they would never send the wrong bolts. So we just kept driving them up and it one snapped. So then we spent three hours <laughs> drilling that one out and then re-tapping the hole. 
and we went to the hardware store and discovered that no, they did send the wrong bolts and they were the wrong pitch and that's why they didn't fit. And so by that point we'd already kind of ruined two of the holes so we had to chase them through with a, with a tap and die. And so um, we did go get the right bolts and now after that they went in nice and easy. So um, I guess the lesson is make sure that the bolts are the right ones. We didn't know and so we looked up on several websites and found out that these are 10 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter thread pitch. The ones they sent were 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. So um, kind of a big deal. So anyway, um, we got it all mounted up so now it's nice and secure. It's all mounted the way it's supposed to be. All the hardware's in. We've Loctited everything. So the next order of business we think is going ahead and putting in the brake. So the brake is going to come out we think through here. So there's a little piece of metal here and it's um, we think we're going to try to drill a hole in there and try to bring the cable out through there. So we'll be working on that today and we'll see how that goes. We didn't get a ton of video yesterday because, <laughs> because as soon as it got like really kind of frustrating, we didn't we weren't like, "Oh, let's get the camera out and you know, record the madness." So, um, we we didn't get a ton of video, but it just took us all day just to get this thing mounted up, but it's mounted now, so I guess we'll call that a win. So today is the break. Hopefully it'll go a little smoother uh, than this bar. So we'll see. All right, so we're about to drill the hole for the small little conduit that goes to pull the brake on the ready brake. So we have watched a video and seen some pictures of how they did it on a 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is very similar to this car. double firewall that it's about an inch and a half thick or so. So we know it's a big, thick firewall and we've tried to position the drill exactly where they positioned it. So, um, but still on the other side it's hard to see where it's going to come out. We have pictures and stuff of where they have theirs coming out, but it isn't exactly clear um, where it is on this side. So we're going to take our best guess and see. through with the other drill bits so we went and bought some of these um, hopefully these will make it through so we're gonna give it a go with these and see how it goes all right so we got the pilot hole through and we were really nervous about hitting a fuel line and it turns out that was justified um, we went really slow to make sure that we didn't pop through and, and go through further and it's literally like right next to the fuel lines. Um, next is going to be drilling it out with the bigger ones. So this is a 5 16th. Sorry about the wind. It's pretty windy today. So this is 5 16th. Um, I'm going to have Michelle go in and try to hold the other one out of the way while we go ahead and drill it with this and then we'll continue with the install. I think it's hitting. Oh, geez. Is it through? Yeah, but it came through a different place. Oh, it did? Yeah. Better or worse? Uh, I don't know. Alright, so the saga continues. Um, we got the hole drilled in the two firewalls plus the plastic thing, so um, we actually got this to go through, but then what we discovered is it was really close to the exhaust manifold. So it's probably maybe an inch or so away from the exhaust manifold. So we went and bought this protective sleeve and it is rated to 2500 degrees of radiant heat. Um, and it's basically just a metal sleeve that we're then going to put over this cable just to protect it as much as we can. Um, it is pretty close, so it's, as Leia says, probably about an inch from, from, from the pipe. So anyway, we're going to run that through and um, get it on here and then route it again. So we'll see how it goes. Shift 
to heat shrink that on there? Yeah. Yep. So now we're trying to feed this through. All right, shish kebab stick. You got it on? Okay, you need to go up. Okay, there, straight through. There, straight through. I hope it needs to go up, and I'll just straight. There. Okay. So, shish kebab stick in. And we'll get the washer on. Can you get me another shish kebab stick? It should be right there. Right here. Are you recording this? Uh huh. Okay, we've put the washer on, I believe. I'll get this guy on. Push it through. Well, we're working on it. Okay, it's threaded. So I need to pull this just to pop. Stick out now. Okay. So here you can kind of see it coming out right there and then it comes out and then you can see the exhaust manifold is back there. It's about an inch or so away. So we put that tape around it so it should, it should protect it. So we'll see. So anyway, now we got to route the front. So that's, that part's done. Bending too much? I don't know. Maybe we should have made the hole up here. No, I don't think that's bending too much. There. 
right, so it looks like we got it most of the way in. So I've got it under here now. The cable goes up under there. I had to drill a hole in that little bracket there. So it occurred to me that maybe it might be a good idea to put some grease on this cable as it goes through. It's dry as it comes out, but the cable comes back through there. So I'll zip tie that to that bar. It goes up through here, and then we put it in that, in this, um, this uh, heat proof sleeve here. So it goes through there, and then it goes into the engine bay. I don't know how far you can see in there. So it goes up through, goes across, and then it goes across, and then up. You can kind of see it way back there. So it goes, that's it right there. It goes up and then it goes in and into the firewall. So I think it's good. So now I'm feeding this cable through. I'm just greasing it up. Here. I'm getting a good amount of grease on it as it goes through and hopefully that'll help it to slide in a little easier and then when it's working it'll help it to remain lubed so anyway I'm gonna continue feeding this through I did not lube the first I don't know maybe eight inches or so because that's just gonna stick out into the into the cab anyway so anyway it looks like we've got it mostly in um, this is pretty much taken all day um, just because it's it's tricky to work this wire in um, and just get it in the right place and then we had to buy the heat shield and all that but this looks feels like it's going in really smoothly all right so day three of this install today we're gonna do the emergency brake so I'll be drilling a small hole for the other cable that goes through. So there are two cables. So we've got the other one done um, with the conduit connected. And now this is the emergency cable, which is just a bare cable that'll come in and also connect to the brake pedal. So that's the project for today. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so we mounted our breakaway uh, brake, and this is the one that if the vehicle were to break away from the RV, this would pull on the brake, and then there's a little box in there that we mounted that only allows the cable to move one way. So it only allows it to pull, and then it holds tension. So it would pull on the brake. As this was breaking away, this is designed to, to break like on this little tab, and then hold the pedal with that amount of pressure just holding the brakes on. So of course that means it would be stuck and so you want to put this in a place where you can get to it. So we've mounted it right under here, right behind the bumper. And so there's a little release in there that I'm sure would be very difficult to do if there was hundreds of pounds of pressure on it. But um, next, now that we've routed the, the other cable all the way through and into the firewall, so this cable, that you see right here goes through that little box and then all the way through and then into the firewall and then under there's a hole under the the main brake line that we did here there's a hole that we put underneath that we then put this cable through and so now both cables are coming up through the floorboard so um, what we had read in the instructions is that this one um, should be zip tied all the way along and then when we attach it to the brake pedal there should be three or four inches of slack so that when you push the brake it kind of just bends the cable it doesn't actually push on this cable like this one will so when we push the brakes this cable will actually move out like this 
but on this one there should be slack inside so that it when you push the brake it just causes a bend in the cable so it doesn't push at all on this side so anyway um, we're going to go ahead and drill through the pedal now and because um, that's the way we had to run our lines is we can't use the clamp besides our pedal has an extreme bend in it so the install videos that we saw all show just a couple of holes drilled into the pedal and then you tie off the the, um, the two cables um, up near the pedal so that's that's what we'll be doing right now so we're gonna drill those holes all right so here's the brake pedal here and you can see the extreme angle from the brake, most brakes have the brake that comes straight up, and so what you would do on most brakes is you would use this clamp to then clamp onto this brake pedal, but this one is at such an extreme angle that we can't get the right angle with this cable. So with this cable, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole here, and then here, and then loop it across, and so we'll use the brake pedal itself as a, um, as the the anchor point for for these two cables so here's here's the main cable and here's the emergency cable so this main cable um, is the one for the actual brake and then this is the emergency one so on this one we're gonna have this one have a little bit of slack like this so when we push the brake it doesn't push in on the cable like that it allows some slack mm -hmm. And through here, it comes up here. Okay. So this needs to be more slime. Kind of like that. Yeah, that seems better. Like up behind it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm just using one of these clamps. We're gonna try to clamp all these. Together, so all four cables clamped together behind the uh, okay, that should be pretty tight. Yep, it's pulling. Good. Okay. That should be tight. So now we can cut the excess here. We'll leave a little bit so we have some adjustability. Let's smash that down as we can. all cut and mounted so the last step is going to be to put two little pieces of heat shrink on there um, so that the wire doesn't fray out so we'll go ahead and put these heat shrinks on there and shrink them on and then the inside part other than we're gonna have to put this trim back on but the inside part will then be done these are all tied up the foot thing is back on and uh, so that's it it's all installed So the last step is to put in this little nylon nut and all this prevents is that 
this doesn't accidentally get tripped, so it doesn't accidentally get pulled, so it'll require a certain amount of force before it sets off the, the emergency brake. So we're just going to put this in, and all it does is pinch that cable. All it does is pinch this cable so it can't... Um, so that it can't be activated accidentally. Now if it's really an emergency and this is being pulled by the motorhome <laughs> or by the bus, um, it's gonna stop it. It's gonna pull right through this little nylon. That's why it's nylon. So it's a little nylon nut. All right, that should keep, yep, should keep it from accidentally activating. So that's good. All right, so the breakaway. I think we're gonna call the breakaway done. So that actually went the smoothest of all the things we've done. So we'll uh, work on the electrical next.